You are listening to the Primitive Intelligence Podcast, episode 609, The Cost of AI. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're not losing your mind. It's just the album art. Don't have the time to do the video editing this week, so it's just the audio only. So I do apologize, but I want to get the podcast out, and this was the easiest way to do it. So this videoless episode of the Primitive Intelligence Podcast starts now. Back in season five, episode 503, AI Inception, I talked about, I wanted to do that episode as a little bit more of a fun joking episode because people, there was a lot of talk about AI and how it was going to be dangerous. And as someone who wasn't really too interested in what AI was offering at the time, I used to be very much into tech. But the older I get and the less innovative tech becomes, and that's a completely different story, that that tech has just become redundant with minimal upgrades, a lot of gizmos and gadgets and flashiness packed into basically the same package year after year after year with very small upgrades. I fell out of love with technology. I I still like technology, but it's not like this big thing that I, I really like keep an eye on all the time. So AI came along at a time when I was just like, I don't care. You know, I really don't care. So I want to do this episode about how it's not all it's cracked up to be. And then as I looked into it, I realized, oh, you know what? There, there might be, there might be some dangers here that we're not really seeing. And one of the things I found was this, I, I can't remember if it was Senate or congressional hearing on AI where they sat down with, I did not look look back and brush up on it. But I know it was Sam Altman from OpenAI. It was a woman from IBM, I believe. And I can't remember the guy's name. He's like an author who was very much into AI in the beginning and is now very much, we need to control this before it gets out of hand. And it was a very interesting, where they all sat down and were like, it's not that bad. It's not like it's evil. It's just a thing that happens and it's not really that powerful. But then as points were made, they all agreed that it needs to be controlled. It needs to be moderated. It needs to be regulated, I guess is the best term, as it expands because it does have the potential of being extremely dangerous. And not everyone is going to work on AI with a moral compass. And that was where it ended. And there's been some talk about it since then, but not much. And after that, there's a lot of shakeups. Like Sam Altman got fired from OpenAI and Microsoft is involved in OpenAI. And they made a stink and they hired, Microsoft hired him directly. And then he was reappointed to OpenAI. And nobody really knows what that was about. Was it, you know, they wanted to do something that he thought was unethical or did he want to do something that, they thought was unethical. No one really knows what happened there. So that all just got swept under the rug. And in the past year, there's been a lot of talk about how AI is disrupting the workplace. And depending on what sources you look at, that's either a reality or it's just all you, you've got nothing to worry about. So if you just do a quick search, And you look and see what AI in workplace or is AI replacing jobs? I forget what exactly I searched, but I saw a lot of initial Google hits that said things like AI is a great equalizer and AI improves productivity and paychecks and it's not replacing jobs. It's helping employees and all this really great fun stuff. But the reality of it is not so great and fun when you're looking at the workplace. In February of 24, the company, it's a, I think it's a Swedish company, Klarna, Klarna. I think they're like a buy now, pay later, one of those like a payment splitting kind of firms. And they announced that its new AI assistant can do the work of 700 employees. So when you contact the company and you have a question, 
its AI can do the work of 700 employees, which is awesome. Now, the announcement was made almost a year after Klarna laid off. Can you take a guess? How many people? 700 employees. Now, Klarna, they claim, the two think they're not related. We, it, the AI is not direct, wasn't directly involved in the layoff. We laid those people off and the business picked up and we needed something. So here's this AI. It just seems very convenient. In March of 24, IBM said they're looking at suspending or slowing hiring for about 26,000 26, non-customer facing jobs. That's about 10% of their workforce. And the CEO has said that he could easily see 30% of those roles replaced by AI and automation over the next five years. So not, we're going to replace them with AI. They're going to lose their jobs to AI, but we're going to lay them off. But those jobs could be, you know, we, we could replace 30% of those. Maybe we don't need all those, but we could replace them. We don't need to hire people back for those positions. Companies like UPS and BlackRock have hinted that AI will make certain tasks easier to do without the need of certain other positions like experts in certain fields. So if you've got uh, a group that writes policy or contracts and they need pricing or information on certain aspects of the, the contract or the project, that there would be a specialist team that would handle that information and research it and then get the information back to that team and they could build these contracts. If you got AI that has all the information and it can just spit it out to these people, then you don't need those experts anymore. Now, they won't commit, these companies, UPS, BlackRock, and there's a bunch of others, they won't commit to saying that AI is eliminating those jobs directly. And they're making it out to say that, oh no, look how effective, look how productive it's going to make these people. But they gloss over the fact that in order to do that, they have to eliminate whole other teams. I was looking at the, the website Business Insider and it's weird because some of their articles are very, very much AI is not a problem. And then some of their articles are, look at what AI did here. I guess it depends on who's writing it and when and what the popular opinion is at the time. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I didn't dig that much into Business Insider, but I saw one article that said in January, Duolingo laid off 10% of its contractors and a representative told Bloomberg at the time that we just no longer need as many people to do the type of work some of these contractors were doing. Part of that could be attributed to AI. So they're, again, they're saying that this, the job replacements weren't directly caused. It wasn't a one for one replacement AI for workers, but the work they're doing can be done by AI. So that seems very convenient in 2020. So going back a few years, that's probably the beginning of this or near the beginning of it. Microsoft laid off 50 journalists from its MSN branch. And because what these journalists were doing were basically aggregating stories and putting them together and getting them ready for the website or various different you know, outlets for news. But AI could do it just as well. So they got rid of 50 people. And you think 50 people, not so bad. Fast forward to 2023, just three years later, and Microsoft lays off about no, not about. Now you fast forward three years only, 2023, Microsoft lays off 10,000 employees, including its ethics and society team, which was small at the time and it had dwindled over the years. But this team were the ones that they ensured ethical, responsible, and sustainable AI innovations. Now they do have a, a department called Office of Responsible AI. But not all those jobs overlapped. Now they could have, they could have changed the, that, their responsibilities when they eliminated this other team. Maybe they didn't need two teams. But I do remember when this 10,000 employee layoff happened. A lot of these positions, they said at the time, could be replaced by AI. And they have since added a lot of AI to what they do on the customer facing side. A, Microsoft is, I don't know what they're, percentages, but they're in partnership with OpenAI, with ChatGPT. They've got the, I don't know what their 
things called. They've got an AI. Everybody's got an AI system. So this opens a, a bigger question because there's official numbers of how many jobs have been lost to AI. And the, the last report I saw said it was only uh, 4,600 jobs have been lost to AI. That's still a lot of jobs, but in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't seem that bad, right? But how many positions have been eliminated for things uh, officially for something else? Oh, we're just downsizing. We're, we're, the market share isn't the same. We don't need the people. But the real reason is AI. And if you don't think that happens, it, it really does. Companies will, they will adjust what they say they let you go for because it fits a certain metric. Because they know there's certain things that they can, they can say and it doesn't cause a big stir and it doesn't really hurt anybody. It just changes the narrative a little bit. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this. And remember quiet quitting? This is like quiet firing. They're going to slow hiring. They're going to let people go for other reasons. They're going to downsize. I saw one quote where the person said, we're going to wake up in three years to see much leaner companies that are running with much less human power. And they're all just basically working with AI. And yeah, it will increase a lot of efficiency, which is great. But there's this backside of AI that is going to cost a lot of people jobs. And what are these people going to do? What are they going to do? There's talk of, well, we're going to need people to maintain the AI. How many people do you need to maintain AI? You don't need the amount. If you needed that amount of people, you wouldn't fire them. You just retrain them. You'd be like, oh, you are now AI specialists. We need people to be AI specialists. They're not doing that. They're just being like, okay, bye-bye. Go work somewhere else. How do we have a society where people don't have jobs, but they still need to make money? What are people going to do? AI is a great thing. I use it for the podcast. Like I said, I think I said that in the beginning. Did I say that in the beginning? I did say that. So like I said, it's a great thing if, to assist you. I use it for the podcast, like I said. It's great. It's awesome when it's assisting, but it doesn't do the podcast for me. It doesn't write a script for me. It doesn't find, uh, it doesn't find topics for me. I, I could go and be like, Hey, find me some topics. And I, I did that with the bonus episodes, but I didn't so much say, find me an episode or find me a, a topic. I would go find the topics and pull a bunch of information and load it into chat GPT and say, hey, give me a summary of all this. And then I'd use that to base those bonus episodes off of. They were nice and short and quick and I could just bang them out. And that was the point, make them short and quick. But it doesn't do everything for me. And that's on the, that's just here. That's just our, the workforce issues that we're going to have with it. Of course, you got things like, you know, assistance on your phone and smart speakers and all the stuff that are always listening. And I don't know how I feel about that. Obviously, your phone is always listening to you. I don't have a smart speaker. I don't, I don't want something like that. There's nothing that smart speaker can do in, in my mind that my phone can't do. So why would I have it? And then you look at the AI and consumer technology, again, like smartphones, cameras have AI in them. There's you know, like AI doorbells that can look for movement, which is great. And there's improvements being made for, with the AI for dangerous situations, for search and rescue, things like that. And that's great. Now we're starting to see AI, <clears throat> starting to see reports of AI in drones, in military drones, in Ukraine, in Israel, and that AI may be using, AI may be used to help identify enemy targets. And this sounds great, but I vaguely remember a movie about people putting AI into military and they're becoming intelligent enough to do its own thing and thinking that we were the threat. What was that movie? There was a couple of them, right? Wasn't that basically Terminator and Matrix? Right? Haven't we been warning ourselves about this for decades? Putting AI on guns and bombs, maybe not the best idea. There's whole other reasons why this is, there's a lot of reasons why this is bad, but with the way things can be hacked, and controlled 
And there's been, there, there's been a lot of weird things going on over the past few months that I don't think are coincidental. We've had at t went down one week, and then the next week it was Meta went down. All Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff went down. There was, there's been a couple of weird things that have happened like this that really seem like attacks. Like, hey, let's see how good the, their infrastructure is. Let's see how good, let's see what they do when they don't have the ability to, to communicate. Now, if you've got, right, and, and then you've got things like these GPS attacks where GPS is being shut down. Uh, if someone can get a hold of the AI and all this computerized networked communication that's running these AI drones and targeting, that could be bad, right? That could be very bad. It doesn't have to, AI doesn't necessarily have to become self-aware. It just has to get hacked. And that is really dangerous. And this is why last year during that congressional or Senate hearing, when they said, look, we need to get not just in the United States, but we need to sit down with other countries. We need this to be a global community where everyone agrees. This is what we do. This is what we don't do. And I immediately thought that was flawed because no one is ever going to agree to all of that. And if they agree to it on paper, it doesn't mean they're going to agree to it in reality. Us included. Don't think for a second we wouldn't use AI if we thought it would be better for national security. Absolutely we would. Should we? You want to make sure that you're protected by the best things that you have. Do you ignore an agreement, a global agreement to do that? It wouldn't be the first time. It wouldn't be the first time in history that countries have said, yes, we agree that this is a bad thing. And then they walk away from the table and then they go, how far away, uh, how far away from releasing this bad thing are we? And can we bump it up before anybody notices? It would not be the first time. And like I said, there are lots of great things. I don't want to harp too much on the, all the, this because that's pretty dark. Being able to, now I understand that, <laughs> that is very dark, a dark way to go with it, that with AI being used in these situations, but unfortunately it, it is happening. And the next, okay, now we've got jobs being lost. We've got military applications for it. That's not even all of it because even still in that dark realm of what this can do, deep fakes are insanely good now. And there's what's the program called Sora that can make video from a prompt. So you can tell just like you do with image generation, you can tell this AI, make me a video about this and it will do it. It'll make video and some of the imagery, some of the video that it does is really good. There's ways, that, you know, your voice can be replicated with AI. I can do it with the podcast. Like I said, the, I use a program, it's called Descript. You load the file in and it transcribes it like you'd see in Google Translate. And then once it has it transcribed, it goes through, it looks for pauses, it looks for repeated words, it looks for ums and ahs. It does all of that. And then you can remove all that. And a lot of times you can do it with one click. We can just go click, okay, remove all those spaces. Click, remove all those repeated words. And sometimes it, it creates a weird, unnatural gap between words. You can then highlight those words where the gap is weird and tell it to recreate it. And it listens to your voice on either side of that gap. And then it re-records in AI with your own voice to make it sound more natural. As an assistant, that is incredible. That can be done for very nefarious reasons. Now, I know there's been, last year there was the whole strike with the writers and the actors and all the stuff in, in the entertainment industry. And one of the things that they were worried about and one of the things they were worried about was AI replacing them or their likeness in voice being used without them having to be there through AI. And it's a real concern. Now, I know I've been critical of that whole thing because, yeah, there's been a lot of things like, oh, AI can take over writing and we don't want that. When we stop getting every movie and TV show as a reboot and a relaunch and a, like every five years and new things are being written, 
then you can complain. But honestly, the way I've seen it, there's been nothing new that's been written by anybody in a very long time. You just rework things. So let's work on some new stuff. But even so, those jobs, their concern can be taken by AI and they're right. Is it as good? Not yet, but it's getting better. But I think that the right now, the biggest problem, the scariest problem in that realm of AI is the ability to recreate someone's likeness in their voice in video format. And then how do you tell what's real and what's not? On, say, I know on YouTube, I don't know if they're doing it yet on Spotify. They might be. I don't remember. But a lot of these sites where you are a content creator and you're uploading stuff, there's now a spot for you to say, hey, look, this is AI generated. This is not real. This is not real. It's been made to look real, but it's not real. And then you check that box and then it puts up a warning. People, they're expecting people to self-police with this. And does everybody? And if it's good enough, who's going to take that down? On the flip side of that, how many real things can be recorded and then be claimed to be fake and then be taken down out of overabundance of caution? And who's looking at that? Because a lot of stuff on these platforms is automated and it's done by AI. So you're asking AI, you're asking people to self-police themselves. You're uploading your content and you're asking AI to search out AI content and then decide whether it should be allowed or not. A really slippery slope. Really, really slippery slope. What are your guys' thought? What do you guys think about, about AI as, well, in any of these terms? As far as, I like it for the, the assistance. I like it if it helps make things easier, which I think is a great tool. I don't think it should be making any kind of major decision. And I don't think it should be replacing the human element. The military stuff is concerning. I don't know how autonomous it is. I don't know if they can just set these things up, send them out, these drones, and just be like, okay, you, you go on patrol and you, if you think it's a good target, you go after it. I don't know if it's capable of that or if, it, if it's being used in a more assistant kind of manner in these things. I don't know. I did not look into that. So don't, don't think I'm saying that we just have AI robots flying around blowing things up, but that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that you know, the reports are that AI is on these, on board these drones and being used for things like target assessment. I would hope that the final call comes down to a human, comes down to actual people making those calls. Because that's not an easy call to make for anybody. It might be easier for AI <clears throat> It might be easier for AI to pull the trigger, so to speak. And that's scary. And that's what all the really horrifying sci-fi movies and TV shows about AI taking over is all about. We should have learned from those. Hopefully, reality doesn't take its cue from fiction. But let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your feedback on this one. I'm going to go ahead. I know this is a little bit shorter episode. But I'm going to get this edited with the help of my my AI program and then get this uh, out to you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's all I got for this episode. Have a great week. See ya.